Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to make this triangular Ichijimi pattern with procyon dye or tie dye. So the first thing I'm going to do is take a pre-washed 100% cotton t-shirt. This one is just like fruit of the loom. You can get them anywhere. Um, and I am going to lay it flat and kind of adjust all of the seams to line up as best as I can. Then I'm going to fold it in the center front first and I'm going to accordion fold the body into a long rectangle and I'm going to tuck the sleeves in the best that I can and make sure that the collar is as flat as I can get it. Once I get it into a rectangle, I'm going to start to fold it into a triangle and I'm going to accordion fold it into a triangle one side up, one side back, just sort of adjusting the fabric as I go because this is a jersey knit so it's a little bit um, unruly to work with. You can just kind of smoosh it into the pattern that you want it to be. You don't have to use an iron with t-shirts. Now that it's in the triangular shape, I'm going to take my uh, acrylic templates that I love to use and I'll put the link in the description below. I use these all the time for Ichijimi Shibori and I'm going to be using them for uh, tie-dye today, which is a little bit different. This is a technique that I use all the time for indigo dyeing, but I wanted to do it with multiple colors and um, see how it turned out. So here's a close up of it. It's all tied up. I put rubber bands around it as tightly as I could. It's pretty big because it's a big t shirt and uh, it's ready for the sew to ash soak. And those templates are going to really keep the dye from getting inside of the t shirt. Now I'm going to soak it in my soda ash solution. This is about a cup of soda ash or two thirds of a cup of soda ash to a gallon. And I just use this soda ash solution over and over again. I just keep it in my studio um, because it's necessary for most procyon dyeing or tie dyeing. And it really helps to prep the fabric. So I'm going to wring it out and the next step is to dye. So I have my drop cloth down and my cling wrap ready and I'm ready to start to dye and put the colors down. So now I'm going to apply the dye. This is a olive green color and I was storing it in this little container mixed up because I didn't have an extra squeezy bottle for it. I use all kinds of things in my studio just to reuse and recycle and um, and store things. So anyway, I'm going to wait for the dye to drip out. It's kind of dripping out there and I'm putting the white side down to sort of soak up that dye that just dripped out. I don't like to waste at all. And I'm just going to continue to put dye down on the edges and kind of put my nozzle inside those folds to make sure that uh, I'm getting as much dye as possible. And I'm layering different colors of dye to get sort of like a interesting look. I'm just sort of playing with what I have and I really enjoy um, color mixing. I feel like that's like one of the fun things about Tie dye, I usually do so much indigo that sometimes it's really fun to just like break out into color and do fun things. I also wanted to let you guys know that I have launched two new Skillshare classes. One is for beginner shibori, which is with pre reduced indigo, and the other one is uh, beginner's ice dyeing, which gives you a really comprehensive step by step. Um, how to and written instructions, which is really nice. So it's kind of like a deep dive of what my YouTube channel is and I'll put the link in the Descriptions below in case you're interested 
Um, if you're familiar with Skillshare and you are a member, you can watch my classes for free. And if you want to check it out, the link I put down will give you 14 free days of Skillshare Premium. And you can see if you like it. It's um, a really awesome platform and I'm a member of it and I really enjoy watching all the different classes. So now that all of the dye is on the fabric where I want it, I'm going to wrap it with cling wrap and let it sit overnight for the dye to set or batch. So now the piece is ready to be opened and I'm taking off the saran wrap and I let it sit overnight to really set the dye and let it soak into the fabric and it's important to keep it wet while it's um, batching or soaking overnight and I'm going to take off my acrylic pieces I reuse them over and over I have the whole set of the acrylic pieces that come in different shapes and sizes which is really great and I've done multiple videos using them I'll put some cards above so you can see the different projects I've done using these acrylic molds and now I'm going to take apart my shirt and see how it turned out. This is always the most exciting part. I love the delicate geometric pattern I got today and I think it's a really modern twist on tie-dye. It kind of gives it a different sort of look and I really like these sort of foresty colors. It almost kind of looks like camo in a way I'm happy with the way it turned out and if you guys want to add more dye at this point you can like if there's parts that you want more dye on. I kind of like this delicate look so I'm going to rinse it with cold until the water runs clear and then wash it on hot with Dawn and in this clip here you can see it's been washed and dried so the colors have faded a little bit and um, you can see the different variations of colors running into each other. I just think it looks really cool. It's like forest colors and this delicate geometric pattern is really pretty. Thank you guys so much for watching and be sure to like and subscribe. Um, it does wonders for my video and you guys can also check me out at Instagram at Onyx art studios and I do a new video every Thursday. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.